Hey, what's up everybody? Kevin here from the Green Acres Garden Podcast. So happy to be in Davis, California at the home of Gerhardt Bach. Uh, today we have a great episode. We're gonna take you on a little tour of Gerhardt's garden. Gerhardt, please say hi. Hi everybody. I'm really happy you guys made it out here. We're really delighted. So Gerhardt is a cactus and plant enthusiast. He has transformed completely um, this little corner lot in front of his home from a traditional landscape of you know, boring shrubs and uh, you know, grass yep. into a wonderland of succulents and cacti, shrubs and perennials, uh, flowers and, and foliage uh, galore. So come along with us. We're gonna show you a little bit of this oasis that Gerhardt has created. So this strip here, used to be a pittosporum hedge, just like you still see down there. It was just this, actually when we cut it down, we realized how many rats were in there. Yikes. And garbage. That's not good. Uh, so we, we, we uh, you know, had them removed, they ground out the stump and uh, we just dumped soil on it because succulents are shallow rooted, you know, they don't go down, you know, more than a foot maybe or 18 inches. And then if they hit that, that clay, you know, they can decide whether they want to root there or not, or they're just, spread out laterally. How often are you watering now? Now it's every 10 days, it's on drip. And uh, you know, it runs for 45 minutes. I actually have a controller. Since this is a berm on my controller, I just set it, say slope, and then it breaks the watering time down into like five minutes increments. So it can actually absorb. So it can actually soak in rather than just running and run off. It just runs a little bit, soaks in. So, you know, I mean, it's, it, it's a little bit time consuming to uh, install drip irrigation, but once it's in there, you know, there's nothing you'd need well, to were, do. Were you a drip pro or did you no, self-taught? No, I knew nothing about drip. What would you t say to somebody who has, hasn't done it, but maybe is thinking about it? Don't be, uh, you know, don't be intimidated by it. You can, you can even buy a kit that has everything in it. And while it's not, you know, for a large area, but at least you see what's needed and then you just buy more. Well, let's take a little step. Let's get a little deeper in because there are some really uh, awesome specimens actually above my head right here. I don't know if you can hear it, but I got all excited for Austin, our audio guy, because when we walked up, I could hear just the bees buzzing. And this is a vitex above my head, usually a pretty small flowering <laughs> patio tree, mm -hmm. uh, you know, maybe a dozen feet taller. This one's 20, 30 feet tall. It's literally buzzing with bees right now. It's in full bloom. What, what do you think? Oh, and this year, it's, I mean, it's never bloomed like this. With, with all the water we've had, you know, everything is just blooming more, it seems. Everything is lusher. It's been, it was a good winter. It was a great winter. You so know? Gerhard, I, I'm really curious. Um, I think there's this misconception with, when it comes to succulent gardens, cacti gardens, um, that um, they're difficult, no. they, they, that they're not pretty, they don't bloom. Whether they're pretty or not, it's up to you. You know, I know, I know people- Fair enough. A lot of people don't like cactus. I will say it's not just pretty, it's gorgeous. It's beautiful here. And you know what? I mean, just look at this, you know, this, yes. this is yucca rostrata. It has thin strappy leaves and this is a, a Nagavia vatifolia. The leaves are rigid, but you know, A, it's back from where people walk. So it's not like you have to touch it. And I mean, look at the same color, but so much contrast in foliage. I which, think it, which really gets me excited. I think it's great. I think you've done a really good job. You're going to see today in Gerhardt's video, you're going to see different contouring of the landscape. So nothing is really flat out here. No. You're going to see a lot of different types of plants uh, for everything from small little little cacti all the way to, to, to massive, tall, um, kind of uh, your more traditional trees and shrubs. There's that a tree are, yellow. Yes, look at that. I mean, there's just, there's so many beautiful, interesting plants here. Some of them you maybe uh, are going to have a hard time finding uh, at your nursery, but... A lot of them, I think it takes a, a little bit of a plant hunter aspect. I, I, I love that, you know, it's like a treasure hunt. I love that aspect of tra traveling. Wherever I travel, I go to nurseries and you find stuff that, you know, your local nursery doesn't have. Or, you know, like you go to Green Acres, whatever, you know, every time there's something different. Absolutely. So yeah, you always got to keep checking in with your local nurseries. Exactly. You can't just say, oh, today I'm going to buy all the plants for my garden. You know, you're not going to find everything you want. You just got to go. When you find a plant that you've had your eye on for a while that you've been looking for, how does oh, that feel? Oh, it's so exciting. <laughs> it's so exciting. And you know, I mean, I know a lot of people too, so we kind of trade. You know, I've mailed little plants to people. I get boxes. Well, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, this, this garden didn't just come to be overnight. No. How long did it take? Um, well, it evolved. We added a second story to our house in 2008, and then they basically trashed everything. So that's after that we started to, you know, re-landscape it. And originally it was like, you know, lavenders, echinaceas, salvias, sort of Mediterranean plants. 
And then I, I kind of discovered succulents because I love the way they look. Yes, they're beautiful. And they need so little water compared to other plants. So I hate watering. You know, I know people, there are some people who like to water their plants every day because they commute. I mean, I plants. can hear your neighbor watering right now. Right. Just, just go, you know, waters everywhere, but I, here, I, I don't, I, I don't want to walk around with a hose. That just does not excite me. And it, people say, oh, you know, that's nothing. I'm going to do it. Yeah, they're going to do it three or four times. And then, and then life happens. They're not going to do it anymore. Well, here, walk us in a little bit yep. because I am just intrigued by this. So, so I, beautiful. I have uh, everything. It's like, look at this, this big agave. I know. Look at this thing's a monster. And then this dude. is, this is a, huge. a black lace elderberry, which is about as far removed from succulents as can be. But you know, elderberries are native shrubs. They, they're perfectly uh, happy with no water in the summer. That's the same great. for manzanita. So, I, you know, I, I combine whatever handles the same watering regimen, the same climatic conditions. That's why I like, I like to say climate adapted plants rather than drought tolerant, which yeah. scares people. Uh, this, for example, it's a, uh, this is a tree from the, from the Channel Islands. That's beautiful. I love it. And, Look at that you know, I, I love combining the... uh, different textures. And uh, I like things that grow up without taking up a lot of space vertically because I'm always uh, running out of room to plant new plants. And I constantly rip out stuff. If a plant gets too big, it's like, I don't have to tolerate Editing. it. It's, edit my, your it's my garden. You know, yeah. I can do what I want. Edit, Absolutely. you gotta edit. And uh, you know, I know some people say, oh, when is your garden gonna be mature? It'll never be mature. Individual plants will be mature, but my yeah, garden will never, never be ends. mature. Because I, you know, I love gardening. Well, Gerhard, I am blown away. And this is one you usually can find at your local nurseries. Oh, that, okay. I rarely see one that looks this healthy. Look at that. That, that is a beautiful anagoxanthus, your kangaroo paws. And uh, that one's remarkable. I mean, look at the clump of those leaves and the, all of those blossoms. How long has that one been blooming now? <sighs> Since April, maybe. Okay, May. so it's doing pretty well. But um, I was told by a friend who is from Australia that kangaroo paws want a lot of water when the foliage is growing, which is like early spring. And you know, we had a lot of rain. That's why it's, I don't know, explode. It's probably double in size of what it was last year. And you're year. not irrigating it a lot right now though. No, no, it's just all on drip. This was a four inch pot originally. So, you know, you can imagine how so small that, that was. So that plant started like that. Yep. So it's pretty cool. So a lot of these plants, they're thriving. Now this is not a cactus, but I love this plant. <laughs> this is the Catinus, purple smoke tree. Yep. And just look at that, that texture and that, that light kind of coming through the backlit. This is oh, a, a so cultivar beautiful. called Winecraft Black, but the most amazing thing about this is that the color, the leaves actually stay purple. Other Catinas, even the, the royal purple or whatever, I've, they just kind of turn this, washed out. this muddled, you know, neither green nor purple. And this stays uh, a nice rich purple. And also this year, because of the rain, it flowered like crazy. And that's why you have this, this smoke thing going on. I Which love are actually it. not the flowers, it's just whatever is left after the flowers are done. Yeah, all the plants seem to kind of be growing into each other a little bit. Yeah. And I kind of like that. They're all kind of touching uh, edges a little bit. And like that back really... here, I like salvias and that's a, oh, a, a desert mallow. So I like it when, when you, uh, you know, when you don't see a lot of soil. Same here, you know, with uh, these are called uh, sun cups from, from Texas. It's a Texas native. This is a nice plant from South Africa. This is a, uh, a prostrate uh, buckwheat from Southern California, and this is a cat mint. Gosh, you have so you so can combine many... a lot of plants. I was say you have so many different varieties. How many different varieties of plants oh, do you think? I, you have I in your don't garden? have the faintest idea. Yeah, he's gone beyond that. I think like, you can look in some of your neighbors. They have maybe five, six different. But all of these of plants. plants, you can th these you can find at regular nurseries. You know. Now, Gerhardt, you've created uh, some contouring here because this seems like it would be normally a flat landscape, yeah. and we uh, we've been talking with some home landscapers and designers. Like we just uh, met with Ruby Andrews and she said she really believes in contouring and creating, yes. uh, you know, almost like a topography on your landscape. You can even see it better here, you know, where I built this one this is up. a really good example. So I have like a two tier, uh, you know, two, two levels basically, the, uh, the agave on top and then I can plant smaller stuff around it. This is just shored up by big rocks. There you go. Which you can buy rocks at a rock yard or you can, um, when I travel and I have room in the car and I see a rock I like, I take it home. Now, this is a cactus succulent garden mainly. Um, I'm looking at a lot of gravel uh, on the top. Yeah. Are they planted in the rocks or is that just a top no, dressing? No, this is just the top dressing. The, uh, the soil 
I could show you over there. Yeah, we'll the have to get a close up. The soil is. Um, some nursery, uh, so some rock yards now sell special um, succulent mix, but before I would just buy regular garden soil and 50% uh, gravel, just the pea gravel. And you know, they bring it in the truck and by the time it gets here, it's all mixed up. Now Gerhard. So it's not, it's not there's like, that's not rocket science. There aren't exact formulas or, or recipes. Hey, I don't think you're watering enough. This plant has no, no leaves. Has no leaves at all. What's going on here? What, what'd you do to it? Nothing, this is a, <laughs> Is this okay? This is called Acacia aphylla, it's from Australia. And it's an aphylla means no leaves. So this is a plant that never has leaves and it photosynthesizes through the, the stems. Actually, technically these are modified leaves. You know, acacias yeah, yeah. have these. So, th so these things here are modified leaves. That is awesome, it looks so cool. But to me it looks great, you know, and this is another um, grevillea. So the contrast, I love the contrast. I mean, this looks soft, it isn't, su isn't super soft, but the contrast is great. Oh yeah, there's Same so over many here with, with this uh, Merlu lavender now that, that you can find just about anywhere. That's our all-star. We, we love our lavenders. Oh, this smells, this smells so smells good. Smells so and that's good. And another, that's another manzanita. Manzanitas are great because they're, they're uh, perfectly adapted to our summers. Actually, many manzanitas don't even want water in the summer, just like Ceanothus. If you water them, they die. So Gerhardt, when you started this garden, you've ripped out kind of a more of a traditional landscape. Um, what... Actually, when we added, they, you know, we added the second story and then everything was destroyed. Yeah, but so when you did start, what, what goes in first? Um, what goes in first is uh, the irrigation, at least the, for the drip, you still need the main lines. And what we did is um, we basically, the, lands, the guy we hired, they converted the, uh, the pop-up sprinklers from the lawn so, you know, you, you, just tap you, right you into have them. that, exactly. You don't need to like rip everything up and, 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 and install new infrastructure just for drip. You can easily convert whatever you have already. Love it. And it's not rocket science, but the first step, it's, I know that from personal experience, taking that first step is hard because you don't really know, you know, you kind of read stuff, just get started and you're going to make mistakes, but you learn from them. I love that. Don't be afraid to don't make be, a mistake. Don't be afraid. You, actually, if everything is easy, you're not going to learn anything. Make, yeah. you know, and the same thing with plants, you, buy, you know, it's like you buy this plant, it's supposed to grow here, you put it in the ground and then it dies. Well, you know, it's not that you failed as a gardener. Some plants just die, you know? Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. And then you get another one, you know? Well, let's, let's take a peek on the inside. Yeah. So the outside of this garden is absolutely incredible, but I think we can get into the interior and see some pretty remarkable plants. So the landscape right here in, in your front yard, and, and to be fair, this, this really is a pretty modestly sized front yard. It's, 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 yeah, it's not big. For how many plants are here and how many flowers are blooming, this really is a, is a pretty modestly sized front yard. So I'm, it's remarkable how much you've done with it. And I think one of the secrets is that you've really created a lot of little islands of landscapes yeah. as well as the yeah. border. And so there's little small trails to navigate down. Although it's getting harder and harder as the agave is yeah. getting bigger. Yeah, I wore shorts today. Uh, the shorts and flip flops were not, would not be good out here. But um, I think there's something to that. You've created some wonderful landscapes, little islands that are packed full. Um, is there something to that? Um, what, what no, but basically so you can see this is just soil, good soil dumped on top of the native soil. And uh, you know, you don't have to dig holes or anything. There's so much going on. Um, does it require a lot of your time? Uh, no, it really doesn't. I mean, I can spend as much or as little time as I want because other than pulling out the occasional weed, there's really not nothing to do now. The, you know, the, the irrigation is automatic. Uh, these plants require nothing. And uh, so, you know, you work or as much or as little as you want. So Gerhard, I am blown away by what you've accomplished here. You've created so much uh, in these past years here. I, I love it. For other people who maybe are hoping to do the same, whether it be by transforming the, you know, their mm -hmm. basic lawn you know, and landscape into something magical or to really do it like this, where it's succulents and cacti and everything else, what would be your recommendations to someone who wants to do that and go down that same path? Try to see as many gardens as you can, private or public, gardens that do something similar. Um, the Ruth Bancroft Garden in Walnut Creek is great. Or just online, you know, there are so many great um, plant groups on Facebook and you see pictures of what other people do. And sometimes you see things like, oh wow, I wouldn't have thought of that myself. And uh, basically do whatever you want, you know. I mean, this is, this, these are the plants I like. 
There's a lot of succulents like these Echeverias, you know, that are really totally non-threatening. So um, create the garden that you like because you don't have anybody to please other than yourself. Well, Gerhard, I want to thank you so much for having us out. I really you have been welcome. inspired by you. What you've created here is truly magical. I love it. I th I th it's, you mentioned botanical gardens. Your home is like a botanical garden. Yeah, I'm a bit of a collector slash hoarder, you know? Yeah, it's an understatement, but I just want to thank you so much. This You're is welcome. magical, and I think, I think other people can get inspired too. If you liked what you saw here, please uh, check out this week's uh, podcast. We're gonna be talking all about, I'll go a little bit more in depth with Gerhardt mm -hmm. to you know, pick his brain a little bit. And I think if he can do it, we all can do it. Seriously, yeah. You know, start small and build from there.